Welcome back everyone to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and I hope you've all had a very good Christmas and are looking forward to a brand new year. Now ever since making my video where I create a small game in Unity in under 10 minutes, I've been wanting to make more content where I make games under crazy constraints. Some ideas I've had are make a game with no graphics, just sounds, make a cool looking game using only a square and circle, and make 10 games in one day. These past few days though, I set myself the challenge to make a working, complete, and hopefully fun little game in a 64x64 64 64 pixels wide screen. Everything from the menu, to the game area, to the win or lose scenes needed to fit inside of this tiny screen area. I just love this sort of creative test. My mind usually thrives under constraints like these. When I have too much freedom, I sometimes fall into a creative block, or waste days on end trying to come up with the perfect idea. So armed with Unity, I began my game dev journey. I made a custom screen resolution of 64 x 64 pixels, and then zoomed in on the game view. Now placing a square, for example, inside of this area, and rotating it would make it look all pixelated, due to the extremely limited limited screen resolution. Then I doodled in Photoshop for a while, thinking of an idea that would fit inside of such a small screen. I quickly imagined a game where all the player would have to do is dodge and try and get enemies destroying each other. For the player's controls, I got him simply following the mouse cursor, which felt smooth and responsive. And then the various enemies simply spawn every second or so, and move towards the player. And if two enemies collide with each other, they die in a shower of pixels. And this made for some simple but pretty fun gameplay, where a good trick to get enemies killing each other was to circle around them. I took advantage of the low resolution to make a weird, pixelated rotate animation for the enemies, and also added a cool trill effect to the player. It's basically just a normal circle that's spawning every 0.05 seconds at the player's position, and this scales down and fades out over time. I then made a simple explosion animation to make enemies colliding into each other feel more impactful and satisfying. It's basically just a black circle which I then turned to white after a few milliseconds and scale up a bit. And in action, it looks something like this, which is pretty cool. Before making more progress though, I decided to run a test build of my game. And ouch, the screen was really this tiny. There was obviously no longer the zoom in feature of Unity, so players would have to strain their eyes to see the tiny player dodging minuscule enemies. Starting to wonder if this game dev challenge was a good idea after all, I searched online for a solution to this problem. How could I make a game with a 64x64 64 64 screen resolution, but that displays itself bigger on people's computers? Sadly, I didn't find any answers. I did discover a cool script though that pixelates the whole game, making it look like the screen resolution is very low, when really it's not. The screen resolution in this case was 640 pixels wide and long, the camera is just a nifty visual trick. And I was quite happy with that. I then decided to add sounds to this small pixel style game, grabbing an awesome free tool that allows developers to quickly make music and sounds for their games, I made some simple chiptune notes to go with the slightly retro aesthetic of my little game. And this is the final result. The game also changes color palettes the higher your score, which I noticed encouraged people to keep playing and beating their high score. I didn't really feel like I'd overcome the challenge I'd set myself, to make a game in a 64x64 64 pixel sized screen. So I made a new Unity project, set my game view to a tiny screen resolution, and pondered for a while on what game could actually be played in such a tiny screen space. Still hooked on my reflex based concepts, I made another dodging game, but that was a bit boring, unoriginal, and all it did was hurt your eyes. And then another idea came to mind, a memory game. There would basically be four squares, and the game would randomly get a square playing a little musical sounds. And then the player would have to memorize which square plays the sounds, and when, and repeat that himself. So for example, square 1 would play, then square 4, and so the player would have to click on square 1 and then square 4, and the game would get harder and harder with more and more squares to memorize. Programming this little game was a nice challenge. I had to store the random sequence of notes inside of a list, which are basically like arrays, but you can also add and remove elements from it while the game is playing, and then check with another list if what the player was doing matched with the random sequence of notes the computer had played. I'm not too keen on programming 
being more of an artist slash design slash story guy. But I must admit, it does feel cool making scripts that look like this. And knowing that the Noah of two years ago would have no clue whatsoever what anything of this even means. Anyway, with a small working game on my hands, I polished it up a bit by adding some sounds. Again, using simple chiptune notes from this cool music tool. And then me and my brother had fun trying to memorize the most notes possible. I had trouble memorizing more than 6 notes. This game is really hard, so why don't you give it a try yourself? The link to play it is in the description. And so yeah, I feel like with this small memory game, I've succeeded in my challenge. And it was a lot of fun. Why don't you try making a game in a few hours that can be played in a tiny screen like this? And then share what you make with me and the rest of the community via the Blackthorn Pro Discord server. Also, let me know what other cool game dev challenges you would like me to try and take on next. Okay, thanks so much for watching this video. An extra big thank you to these awesome people for supporting me financially via Patreon. It's just so appreciated and encouraging. Alright, stay tuned, plenty cool stuff is coming up. Cheers! Cheers.